Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jake. I'm an IT system administrator at an MSP, and today I'm going to discuss all of the tickets that I touched yesterday. So if you've watched the first couple of these videos, you're going to see some patterns with some of the tickets that I have, and then there are some that are just completely different. To start off the day, I started off with a link down ticket, which is when an internet connection is not showing us connected on our software-defined WAN device, so uh, VCE, and it shows down, and basically I have to go in and check out what's going on. Vast majority of the time, this is either A, reboot the modem, or B, call the ISP and see what they can do. This time, it was already back up, so I didn't actually have to do anything. It was awesome. After this, I did an Apple MDM certificate, which is something that you have to do in Intune in order to be able to administer Apple devices. It's very easy. You go in, you create a CSR. A CSR is a certificate signing request and then you upload that request to Apple. Apple will give you back a cert, and you take that cert, and you put it in Intune, and you're good to go. My third ticket, I had a tier one reach out to me for help adding an email to the safe senders list for someone. So I went on GPT, and I looked up how to add someone to the safe senders list, and we did it. After this, we had a kind of interesting ticket where a customer requested that somebody not be able to work from home, but that was all the details that they got. So we weren't sure if they were talking about VPN. However, VPN is intertwined with MFA for this company. And so we didn't want to just remove VPN access. We weren't sure if they were talking about logon hours. There are some implications with something called Exchange Active Sync, which allows you to use Microsoft on your phone, Outlook on your phone, I should say. So I, we had to gather more details. I had the T1 go back and gather more details. Haven't heard anything back since. After this, I had another very common ticket that I get, which is drive space full. So somebody's SQL server was 90% full. The server already had three terabytes of data on it, but if SQL, you know that it takes up as much space as it possibly can. And so SQL servers for us are treated as a priority because obviously it's a database. It has a lot of important information to it. So I reviewed, I sent that off to our data center team they got the space allocated, they sent it back to me, and I actually expanded the drive in disk management. After this, I looked at a persistent account lockout ticket, which are always interesting. It's when someone complete, keeps getting locked out over and over in Active Directory at some certain interval. It can happen for a million different reasons, but we looked around. First, we go to Event Viewer. We look for 4771 events and 4625 events or 4740 events. That can give us some information as to where the lockout is actually coming from, what IP address we can track down that IP address device. Look, is there some scheduled task? Is there some service running that's logged on as that person or trying to log on to that person? Is there something in Credential Manager that's holding and spamming credentials? Or there could be a million other reasons. And honestly, we worked on this for 45 minutes. We didn't find the answer. I didn't have the capacity to fully take it on. So I was like, hey, take this, put it on the T2 board. Some other tier two ended up with it. I should check in and see what's going on with that ticket. After this, I help someone create a shared mailbox. Very easy. You go into Microsoft Exchange, you click on mailboxes, and you create a shared mailbox. After this, again, you're gonna see I'm helping a lot of people throughout the day. Someone needed an installer, so I helped them track down the installer. After you work in IT for a while, I think you just get better at navigating file systems, and so it gets easier for you to track down certain files and you see how things are structured, whether it's on the D drive or the F drive and what subfolder it might be under and you just get good at tracking stuff down. After this, I finished up a KB that I was creating. It's a knowledge base article for scan to email. All of the differences between something called SMTP relay and direct send and how to set up either one and what are all of the intricacies that go into it. I learned about these concepts because I suffered over a ticket for 15 hours changing from SMTP relay to direct send. If you're interested in how mail is sent, take a look at those two concepts. It's pretty interesting. Don't spend 15 hours on it though. After this, I had a fellow T2 reach out to me, a fellow sysadmin, because a switch had restarted and the point of contact wanted to know, hey, why did this restart? Unfortunately, when a network device restarts, you lose all logging for that network device and we don't have a dedicated syslog server just for this device or for any devices for that org. And so we didn't have any information. So we went in, we ran show version. You can at least see exactly when the device restarted. And Cisco gave us a lovely error message, which is very Windows-esque, which is, it could have been power, but we don't know. So they basically give us no information. After this, somebody needed help tracking down the AD sync server. So when you have an on-premises active directory environment 
and you're a hybrid environment, so you also use Microsoft 365, Entra, conditional access, things like that, you have to sync from on-premises up to the cloud. And so you need to run this command, start AD sync cycle policy type, either initial or delta, to make that sync actually happen. If not, it happens at some certain interval that you set up. But you need to do that command on the correct server. Every one of our companies, we have a gazillion companies, I think we have like 200 different companies, have this sync, it's called Entra Connect, Active Directory Connect, and they have it on different servers. So we always have to track it down. Again, just like a file system, as a system administrator at this company, you get really good at tracking down the sync. So we tracked it down and I sent the sync for him. After this, I got to do another one of those Apple MDM push certificates for another company. Very easy. I've done that probably 20 times now. It's like second nature for me now. After this, again, we've had this ongoing ticket where we've been having VPN troubles with a company out of India. And so we, I shouldn't say a company, a, a contracting company out of India. And so I had a call with my colleagues about this for about a half an hour discussing everything that's going on, what's related to what, where we're at and where we're going next. Fortunately, I'm not the owner of the ticket, but I am a resource that's helping the owner of the ticket and helping general troubleshooting. I've probably put 10 hours into that ticket already. Next, I got to update a network diagram with public IPs for a company, which was actually fun because I had to go into the FortiGate appliances for the company and grab the public IP for each branch. And I think there was like 10 of them. And so it was cool just to play around in FortiGate, see, hey, what can I see? What can't I see? What am I looking at? And deciphering that. After a while, it got monotonous, but it was interesting to, to mess around in FortiGate. I always like jumping into network devices. Next, I had someone reach out to one of the companies that I'm a system administrator for, which is a company that's entirely in the cloud, which isn't very common for our companies. Most companies are hybrid companies where they have someone, they have on-prem Active Directory, and then they have the cloud environment, it's a hybrid environment. He reached out and he basically just didn't know what was going on. I had to explain how they don't have a domain controller, everything's in 365, all Intune policies and things like that are in 365. So it was an interesting conversation. Next, a tier one reached out to me because someone was requesting that USB access be granted for these devices. I didn't even really look at what the devices are, honestly. It was like some kind of broadcasting service or something like that, but this company is in a highly regulated industry and USB generally is not allowed external USB. And so we have security groups for allowing and not allowing USB for a lot of our companies. But in this situation, it was a matter of, I guess, a tier one, not really knowing the implication of what was going on. She thought that it would require creating a new GPO, which I didn't verify, but I don't think that's the case. It was more of a situation of, Hey, is this something that we really should do? And that's something that is actually over my head. We have a system engineer who We'll run that by and make sure that's actually a good idea or not a good idea, or if there's a better way to go about it, we'll do it that way. So it was just a consult on that ticket, discussing GPO, discussing security groups, and discussing the implications of a policy like this and how we have our things set up right now. Next, I had someone reach out asking a question regarding our remote monitoring tools, what they actually do, what they don't do. I got to explain the difference between our tools and what they do and actually domain joining advice and having a device on the network. This is a conversation that I have very often. When you're a system administrator in an MSP, you have to be a domain generalist. That means you have to know everything about how a domain works, how things are interconnected, what does what, what doesn't do what, and which direction things sync, which direction things grab policies from, what can install what, and it's just the, mat the nature of the beast of being in a company like the one that I'm in. And so it's a conversation that I have very often because when you come in as a tier one, when I was starting as a tier one, it's a lot of information and it's a lot of things that are confusing. And it's like, hey, what does this do? What does this do? Does this do this? Compartmentalizing all of that in your brain and saying, hey, this belongs here, this does this. It's a process, it's a multi-month process. So people reach out to me for it all the time, always happy to teach. And so that was that discussion. Next, I had a colleague reach out because they needed some snapshots taken of a server in VMware. So I went into VMware and took the snapshots of that server. It was very easy, I should say, a snapshot of multiple servers. And it's so easy to take snapshots in VMware. If you've played around with VMware at all, you just click on actions, take snapshot, put in a little description, put the ticket number in, good to go. So that'll be his to delete whenever he needs it. Next, I had a very common mail forwarding rule where I just had to take a terminated employee's mail and forward it to someone else. Tier one doesn't have permissions to do that. So I did it and it was very easy. And lastly, at the very end of the day, I got to touch an interesting ticket where a company wants to make a GPO blocking 
Edge and Chrome from storing passwords for them. I've already done quite a bit of GPO with Edge and Chrome, and so I knew that there are ADMX files and ADML files that you need to grab in order to actually have the default templates for Edge and Chrome, and fortunately Edge was already in there, so I t actually took the tier one through the process. I just let them do it. I told them exactly how to do it. I, we discussed GPO, we discussed security filtering, we discussed linking, we discussed how you can break stuff and how you can ensure that you don't break stuff, which is very important, and we discussed testing. And then we also talked about those files and those policy definitions and how you get those administrative templates in order to be able to do it with Chrome. We didn't have that at that time, so we actually did that this morning. I guess that might be in the next video. And so that was the day yesterday. It was actually quite a light day. Like none of those tickets were super, super stressful. And it was a pretty chill day. I think I got maybe seven hours billable out of all of that. And I touched 21 tickets. So you can see volume is high. The workload is can be high, but it all depends on which tickets you're actually getting. If you're getting people reaching out on tickets that are relatively easy, a lot of these conversations that I have, I've had 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 500 times. And so it's not actually that scary. It's just like second nature after a while. So that was the day yesterday. Let me know if you like these videos. If you want to see more, certainly let me know in the comments. Appreciate you guys. Have a good day.